This episode of Long Night with Vish Khanna was recorded before a studio audience on Friday, January 4th, 2019. to see you here. Thanks for being at the Gladstone with us. Uh, And uh, how about another cheer for the bicycles and James Keast? All right, welcome to Long Night. We're going to get things going right away. I'd like to introduce our first guest. Uh, He's the namesake for a band that also features Sarah Jane Riegler and Chanel Matisse, and together they released their latest EP, Goat Life, in 2018. He's also a part of a community events organization in Toronto called House Orpheus, whose monthly open mic night, Speak Your Truth, launches at the end of this January. Please make some noise for John Orpheus. <laughs> Hi, John. Wagwan. How are you? I'm splendid. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you on the show. How are your holidays? My holidays were very interesting. Unusual. Oh, how so? Well, I'm Trinidadian. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm also a dad. Are you? <laughs> I just have two, though. Is that what that means? No, I'm just kidding. So I, I hadn't done Christmas with my dad in about 20 years. Oh. Because I'm Trinidadian. Is, is your dad in Trinidad? No, he's in Barrie. Barrie. Oh, <laughs> common mistake, I'm sure. So for what we did for Christmas was he picked me up on Christmas Eve, and for three days we did a road trip, but it was like to like all these little towns around Collingwood and Newmarket. And it was very, lots of farms, lots of farm animals, lots of Christians. And it was really hilarious, but very unusual. It sounds like the manger scene, frankly. That's very festive. That's cool. So Except with a lot of weed. (laughs) Oh, I see. Okay, so, but it was a good holiday? It was amazing. I loved it. That sounds laid back and fun. Yeah. Do you often go on road trips with your dad? No. No, okay. ever, not okay. ever. Yeah. Now, you and I have an, a unique history, I, I would like to say. Please do. Because uh, I, I, d- I didn't, we'd lost touch uh, over the years. And then earlier last year, I guess, sometime last year, uh, John and his group were on uh, my, my podcast, Creative Control. And at the end of it, at the end of talking for like an hour, it clicked that you and I had gone to high school together. True. We went to high school in Cambridge. Glenview Park Panthers. Anybody here from Cambridge, Ontario, rooting for the Glenview Park Panthers? Okay. That's cool. Now you, I remember, I played uh, basketball on the, uh, what was the thing that was like when you weren't good? <laughs> what team was that? I don't know. I can't, yeah, you were always good. <laughs> I was but you good, you yeah. played basketball and I played basketball. I remember that. And I, remember, I feel like you came to high school kind of midstream. Did you move to Cambridge? Is that what happened? That's right. I moved from New York City um, to Cambridge in like grade like 12 right i was in brooklyn getting into trouble because there's a lot of trouble in brooklyn well just so people recognize this cambridge is of course known as the brooklyn of the north true (laughs) (laughs) hyper gentrified (laughs) hipsters to the max no uh why did you move from new york to cambridge first of all well i i actually went to six high schools in five years I was kind of like, my parents just kind of passed me around a little bit. Oh. Yeah, so I can have different experiences. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So you ended up in Cambridge and, uh, d- okay, here's the thing. I remember you. Yeah. Well, what was I like in high school? Oh, my gosh, I have a story. And oh, I no. never told you this in the summer. Oh, I have my a story. God. Okay. So um, it's the 90s, so it was grunge time. And one of my favorite <laughs> memories of you and of high school was being at a party 
And like, um, I think it was in utero, it just came out. And yeah. so, like, there was like this. By, by the band Nirvana. By Nirvana. <laughs> 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 they were big. <laughs> they were a big band from uh, the Seattle area, yeah. And the, and, and the whole party was empty, but you were there and they were playing the song and you were headbanging the hardest I've ever seen a human headbang ever. Yeah. And I was like, that guy loves it. <laughs> I want to love it as much as that guy. So it's, it's a beautiful... I never told anyone that. I didn't know so that. That's go. amazing. So that's your lasting memory of me. Wow. You know what I ordered uh, over the Christmas break uh, off the internet? A Nirvana t-shirt. <laughs> In the year 2018, on the cusp of 2019, yeah. I love... Nirvana. I yeah. still love Nirvana. Yeah, you had, you were wearing. I remember it. You yeah. were wearing the shirt with the with the smiley face with the bullet hole in the. Oh, forehead. did I have that shirt? Yeah. I don't remember having that shirt. My I, mom must have stolen it from me. But yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I love Nirvana. I love them. Yeah. I love them. So, did you like Nirvana? At the time, I was like kind of interested, but I was more listening to hip hop. I really like Nas. Right. And but yeah, later on, I really got into Nirvana and okay. grunge. But you know, yeah, at the time, I was just kind of like. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, I, I was trying to think if you played music at all. I played music in high school. Yeah. I started, I learned, like I was, my friends and I were kind of teaching ourselves how to play. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like either at the end of high school or after I left, I heard that you were into music. And I don't remember knowing that while we were both at Glenview. I was before, when I was in, before I went to New York, I was all the time. I played bass, I played guitar, I sang, I was in bands, I wrote songs. And then it just stopped, and mm. I replaced it with basketball. And then, then I was like, I'm 5'8", I'm not going to go to the NBA. Let me see what this You did well on the Glenview Park basketball team, as I recall. I, w I was pretty good. Yeah. I was determined. And you're, did you have a brother? I do, did. Do, I had, do you still I have, have six. <laughs> you, you have six brothers? I have six brothers, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm Trinidadian, I might have uh, Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. That's true. Okay. So you got into music. Uh, were you playing? So did you answer my question? Were you playing in high school? At all? You didn't play. Well. No, not at Glenview. Okay. I wasn't playing at Glenview. So you put it down for basketball. When did you pick it up again? Um, basically, when I got OSAP and realized you could buy a bass guitar and amp with that. So <laughs> I did. You, you took your student loan money yeah. that the Ontario government provided yeah. you, and you bought musical equipment. Yeah. Okay. And how did school go, by the way? I paid them off. I got my degree. It all worked out. Okay, that's good. I rocked and <laughs> rolled. And, and so when you were on the show in the summertime, yeah. I broached this, and I didn't really get into it too much, but you, have like a, you, you had an encounter or two at least with Liam Gallagher, right? Word. What Liam was Gallagher, anyone? He was in the band Nirvana? No, he... Oasis? He was in Oasis. They That's were right. very big. <laughs> they were very big in the 90s. You guys know Wonderwall, <laughs> right? Any show of hands, anyone? Okay. Wow. Some people are looking at us like, wonder what? Well, I mean, they were a pretty... Do you guys know, you guys know who Liam Gallagher is, right? Yeah. Comedian? He used to smash things with a watermelon? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any comedy nerds in the audience got Let's that one? Let's smash some fruit. Yeah, that's what they did, mate. Anyway, what what you have a thing with Liam? Yeah, so in the '90s, I was a weird black kid because I loved like music. I loved all music, so I was listening to hip hop and Biggie and Nas and Jay Z. But I was also listening to like Brit pop and and like bands like The Smiths and like Oasis. Radiohead, we love them. But I love Liam Gallagher the most because he was just like badass. He was like working class and he was just like, let's just break some shit and be assholes. And that was appealing to me <laughs> at the time. So fast forward like about 15 years, I join a band from Manchester who are Liam's buddies and I end up opening for the Oasis guys on a European tour. It was Liam's band, uh, what was that band BDI, called? BDI. BDI, that's yeah. right. Right, right, right. And it was very intimidating because he really, really, really liked me. And so Liam Gallagher is like a millionaire rock and roll hall of fame. And every time you'd be singing, he'd be sitting side stage for every single set. And as soon as I'd come off, the first guy I'd meet was Liam. And he's got this Mancunian Manchester accent. He's like, oh, you're the fucking top front man, mate. You're fucking amazing. You're fucking. And I'm just like, 
And, I, and I'm nervous, because I'm like, yes, sir, Mr. Gallagher, yes, absolutely. Right, as you, as you would, yeah. Yeah, I was just like, dude, you're the fucking man. And he's like, no, 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 you're the fucking... So, so how, yeah. how, long ago, how long ago was this? That was um, 2012. Okay, and have you, there's no contact now. You have not. Yeah, no. You don't we, email Liam Gallagher. Sometimes. Do you? I actually, I email Andy Bell, who is the guy I really got on with the most, and Gem Archer. I, I'm more in contact with them, but yeah. yeah, we have a lot of people in common. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. For sure. Okay, so let's fast forward past. That was a was the Manchester band like a punk band or rock? no? It was like Brit pop. We, we called it 21st century Commonwealth soul. It's called the Hippie Mafia. It's on Apple Music. It was like Brit pop with a Caribbean guy rapping. That was me. <laughs> yeah, and it was glorious. I liked it. That doesn't sound good. It, no, it is good. Was it's it, dope. Was it's it dope. actually good? No, nah, it's really good. Yeah. It just doesn't appeal to yeah, my yeah, sensibilities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's because you're not Liam Gallagher. Liam loved no, it. No, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. So we fast forward now to, as I say, I lost touch with you. I think we, you became friends with me on Facebook, or I did, whatever it was. And, and I feel like you had a new, number of aliases, mm -hmm. different names. Yeah. And now uh, <laughs> in high school, you weren't John Orpheus. You were somebody else. Yes. Now you're John Orpheus. What and like, how did you become John Orpheus? And what is John Orpheus? Because it's also your moniker, yeah, and it's also the name of the, the band. The, the yeah. band. So yeah, what? Yeah. Did, what and how and why? <laughs> so this is what I'm, I learned at journalism school. I'm laughing because I'm currently <laughs> racing to meet a deadline for a book I'm writing for Penguin Random House. The book is called Becoming John Orpheus. Oh, and it explains exactly. Oh, this, do you so. want me to just wait till the book comes out? Yeah, that's, that's a weird. Right. <laughs> Weird evade, well, you evaded the question and plugged a book that is yeah, done. You like that? That was amazing. <laughs> no, it's like, I was like, for me, it was always like, like you're a Caribbean kid. I came to Canada when I was 11. Mm -hmm. I literally went from the jungle to the blizzard. Like, literally, it was like four days in between. And I went to northern Ontario, completely confused. And I always felt like I had this dual identity. So it was always like, how do you define yourself in a place where everyone, most of the country is white, most of the places I live was white, but I was black. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel Trinidadian anymore, but I didn't quite feel Canadian. I didn't feel hip hop, I didn't quite feel rock and roll. So how do you define yourself? And me, again, because I'm Trinidadian, I think, um, I just started creating personas and identities and trying them on like coats. I see. You know, and just see if it fit. If it feel nice, people shout you out. You like it. You wear it for a while, and then, then maybe you get a new coat. So and so that's you, what I did. You felt your like I grew up in Cambridge, and you know I kind of I felt that I was different than the most of the kids at our high school. And you were. And <laughs> I know. <laughs> I told my therapist all about it. No, I uh, no, but I also you know I I would try to like. Uh, uh, head off the racism by kind of owning it, yeah. playing like I was like high school Russell Peters, you know. I did, <laughs> I'll do the accent before you do the accent, sir. You know, I was that yeah, 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 that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. And uh, and then at some point, I'm like, well, why the hell would I behave that way? Mm -hmm. A self-loathing do Hindu, self-loathing do. I don't right. want to be a self-loathing do. Yeah. So I, uh, I I that's what I did to try to own it. It's like that scene in Eight Mile, you know, where Eminem is like, he's a white rapper. He. <laughs> He was big. He was huge in the 90s. And he does a thing where he, he takes all the insults that they might hurl at him and then he makes it the freestyle. I was doing that. I was ahead of Eminem. Yeah. I was kind of, did you? Did so he, did, st he stole your he thing. He stole my thing. Damn. White man. Sue, man. Anyway, so you. Colonizer. Did you, did you, you felt different. You felt your difference in Cambridge? I just felt, I felt like I had a lot of things to say and all the models that I was given to say it in didn't fit. Okay. I felt like all the boxes they were giving you and they were like, okay, express yourself in this way or that way, it just didn't work. I was hanging out with metal dudes and I was like, well, I love metal, but there's something more to me. I was playing hip hop and then I was like, you know, that's not quite it. And then I realized that I just had to make the thing that defined me and told my story. So I did and then, you know, then I made it again and again and again and John Orpheus is like the greatest culmination of all of that. 
So what for the, you're going to perform here at Long Winter? Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty here. So yeah. hopefully everyone comes back for that. Uh, how would you characterize or describe John Orpheus? Because to, for me, it seems like it does seem like an amalgam yeah. of all your musical interests. Yeah. As, on some level that that I'm aware of, anyway. Well, first of all, it's very Trinidadian, which I'd never done before in all my inclinations. I was always like, no, don't, you know. And I came over as a kid. I didn't want to talk in my accent. I have an accent. Y'all might not know. But if you buy my rum or two, you can hear it, all right? <laughs> so I, I, I didn't understand what he said. Yeah, it's completely. Is <laughs> we need like a translator track? No, no, no. That so your accent yeah. comes up. So every once in a yeah, while. it's very Trinidadian. It's very energetic. It's very dancey. Um, you know, as you know, Chanel and Sarah are in the band with me, and and it's just about dancing and singing and just being joyful and. Uh, you know, I like it. I like it. It's nice. It's real nice. <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic. And yeah, I think I it's it. good that you found joy. What is House Orpheus, though? I alluded to this. Yeah. What is House Orpheus? So House Orpheus is spelled H-A-U-S. That's the German way, and there's a reason for that. Um, House Orpheus is kind of like a... John Orpheus is me building a thing for myself that fit me when I'm a misfit. And I realize there's all these other misfits um, from... Commonwealth countries like former colonies, Nigeria, Rwanda, Jamaica, St. Vincent, wherever, and we're all downtown. And I was kind of like, maybe I should just start putting on events for all of us. Because if there's this many of us and we're all misfits, if we all get in the same room and do what we do, then we're not misfits anymore. We yeah. fit in. Yeah. So the reason why it's spelled the German way is because I lived in Kitchener, which is near Cambridge. And there's a lot of Mennonites there. And the Mennonites build houses in the craziest way. They just all come down on a weekend, kids, wives, husbands, and they just build a house in like a weekend for the person. And then when the next person needs a house, then they all go build a house. And so it's a very community vibe. They're pacifists. And it's very beautiful. So House is Orpheus... It, is it a nice house, though? It, does, it sounds like a bit of a rush job. I no. mean, <laughs> is there Wi-Fi? Like, how does the house work wiring-wise? Like, HVAC alone, that's a couple weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to digress. <laughs> don't let the gift house in the mouth. Okay, right. There you go. That's good. That was good. <laughs> I like a good punch. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so House Orpheus is about inclusivity, we try to highlight people of color. We try to highlight women. We try to sort of be represent for the people that don't get represented for. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very and it's a very queer friendly space, very African, Pan African friendly space, intersectional feminist friendly space. And yeah, like so, we have a range of events. We do concerts called House Orpheus Presents. Yeah. We have something called Speak Your Truth which is coming back on the 30th of January at Poetry Jazz Bar in Kensington. Um, which like is an open mic thing? It's an open mic. Um, anything that involves words, it could be comedy, it could be a song. It, if you got bars, if you were a rapper, you can come through and rap. It's nice. And, uh, and it's a really beautiful, like, the vulnerability is always really powerful and it's really accepting and inviting to whatever is offered. And then we do Afro House twice a month, and that's just African pop music dance party. So cool. We dance. No, that's it's awesome. And I yeah. mean, it's important for the city to have you doing this stuff, if I might say. We're, well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's important to me and to the people involved. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I think so too. I, I think, think so. it's important yeah. to have that voice. So, where can people hear or, or listening uh, to this show? Uh, where can they go to learn more about you and, and this stuff? Um, on all the tings, if you look up John Orpheus on the Insta ting or the Twitter ting or the Fierce ting, we're on all them tings. Um, house tings Orpheus. means things. <laughs> yes, just put an H. Thank you. Just, Thank I just you. Some people don't understand. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was trying to help. That's my for House Orpheus, it's just like it's how it's House Orpheus H A U S at House Orpheus on Instagram, and they'll tell you everything. If you like the African dance party part, go at Afro House T O, and again, House is spelled H A U S the German way. Um, and yeah, that's what's up. Or you can go to JohnOrpheus.com. Um, or you can just come talk to me after I'm friendly. Nice. We do it up. 
John, I appreciate you being back on the show and being here tonight. And uh, again, uh, coming up here at 11.30, did you say? 11.30, here on the stage. Uh, Chanel will be here. Sarah will be here. If you're around, please come check it. It's going it, to be a party. It's fun. We might have to move the chairs, though, because we... we t we intend to palance, for those of you who know, you, you know what that palance is? All right, <laughs> top marks. And you're gonna, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna come back, we're gonna have you on for a little panel talk at the end of this. Oh, are we? Yeah. I'm not done talking, okay. Yeah, you can come back. All right. Is that cool? Yeah, that's very cool. Okay, have another round of applause for John Orpheus. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break and then when we return, Shanti Marastiga is here. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Long Night. Thanks, Bicycles. That was great. Have another hand for the bicycles, everyone. So great. Thank you. And have another round of applause for John Orpheus. It's fun. Our next guest is originally from Winnipeg and made history becoming the first transgender comedian to win the Sirius XM Top Comic Award in 2018. Winning a cash prize. Yeah. Winning a cash prize and earning spots at Just for Laughs festivals in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and Australia. Their latest album is 2018's stand-up set, The Shanty Show. We are so thrilled that they are here with us tonight, so please say hello to Shanty Maresica, everyone. Shanty Maresica. Hi, thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Th thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Every it's so there's a everything's so beautiful. I don't know what's happening. What? what <laughs> yeah, no, everything is. That's a nice thing to say. How I just didn't see what that armadillo was until it was a house. Yes. From the front, but that's I realized that this is an audio. Yeah, we have an audio thing. podcast, but there's a, a a beautiful sculpture, a structure. What's and it called? It's a it's a it's all uh, installation. That's what I meant to say. Oh, it's art. It's art. That's what I meant. That beautiful yes. art has inside. <laughs> and it's got like a t it's like a tent inside, and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shanti, uh, it's nice to have you on the show. Uh, I begin by asking how your holidays. Oh, sorry. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Uh, has anyone wished you Happy New Year yet? Am You're I the first person. <laughs> That's just how no, I am. I have it there. I don't know any white people, so it's <laughs> great. Yeah. Uh, how was your holiday? Did you have a holiday? I did. I guess. I yeah. I had uh, Christmas, is what they call it, where <laughs> I'm from. It's Winnipeg. If you've ever heard of racism, they invented it there. Um, I, I my parents are from Winnipeg, but I just saw them in Australia uh, up to a couple weeks ago. So. I just spent the holiday for the first time with just some friends, and I felt like a real grown. I felt like a real boy, a real, gr real grown ass boy. So you stayed here. You stayed. Yeah. Here. You did not go to. But wait a minute. You saw your. Why were your parents in Australia? Why were you in Australia? What? I um. I got to uh, film uh, uh, tape a set at the Sydney Opera House for just for laughs. Uh, what? Yeah, and I was the first out trans person to do that. <laughs> also, Amazing. I'm trans. <laughs> So my parents, uh, pr top comic competition, that I won it, and then my parents, part of the prize was to go to Sydney to tape the set, and my mom was like, you know, no pressure about the competition, but I'd really like to go to Australia. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no pressure, mom. And then they listened to the top comic competition is aired on Sirius XM, and they listened to it in a hotel room in Thunder Bay, it, where, yeah, that place is problematic too. Um, <laughs> And then they, I, I didn't, it was like a five minute delay and I just got a bunch of texts from my mom that were just Australian flag emojis. And I was, I, at the time I was very excited, but I didn't know that meant that my parents would sleep in my hotel room with my dad's sleep apnea machine, so. Oh, the mask? The yeah, it's like the mask that people wear so they don't die in their sleep. I don't, you know what, sleep apnea is a terrible drug or whatever it is, it's, it's terrible. Not, it's definitely not a drug. It's, it's a terrible a, whatever, it's. it's ailment? Yeah, it's like, you know what you should add in post? You explaining sleep apnea <laughs> so I stop sounding like a jackass. You're I'm not like, trying to be an ableist, but got my dad... anyone high off this sleep apnea? Whoa! It just it made, you made it seem like... No, it's like this machine my yeah, dad puts yeah. on, and then he's like, I won't die in my sleep! <laughs> and then he doesn't die, and it's crazy. It is pretty crazy. It's yeah. wild, sorry. Right. So how was Australia? That, I mean, it was really great. It was very homophobic, and what a great place they have there. <laughs> For trans people. Did you experience any homophobia per se? I, <laughs> I made the mistake. I, I thought I was really cute. Those homeless Toronto shirts. I said to myself, I says, 
you know it'd be a good shirt homo is toronto so i made those for myself and i was said to my mom i says hey i just got to australia why don't you guys i just have seen you for three minutes and i can't stand you i'm gonna go walk around sydney in a shirt that says homo is toronto looking like smash mouth and I uh, just took to the streets and I tell us you what uh, I, I got this like very friendly faces in Sydney I called it the Sydney uh, the Sydney grin I got this a lot people were upset that I was alive so oh, man. I was just like it's my mom said when we walked down the boardwalk uh, Wow, that was really cute. Um, when we walked down the boardwalk together, she was like, I'm used to people looking at you very different because I'm from Winnipeg and I, and I, I look like Guy Fieri. Um, not that they haven't seen someone like that before. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's like all like NASCAR shirts and like Fox car racing. So uh -huh. it's like everybody's Guy Fieri. Right. Uh, but I was like, I'm used to seeing people like react to you funny, but every person's face looked like that in Sydney, which was surprising. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it was hurt. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, if you're queer, you know, that look yeah it just hurts to have it happen so often and it just hurt more that my mom had to notice it yeah now you mentioned that uh you earlier you asserted that winnipeg uh is the uh home uh city for racism uh which is uh that's not a good distinction to have uh you grew up there right yeah and so uh i, I mentioned this to john i might as well ask you how aware of your difference were you in Winnipeg? If you if you felt different, did you did people mention your difference to you, to your face? Always, yeah, all the time. <laughs> uh, really? I I guess like in my comedy, I joke that I look like a small town gay because somebody said that to me once because it's very obvious that I'm gay because you kind of have to protect yourself from just being hate crime all the time because if somebody sees this, they're not gonna like this. So as soon as you see right. that, you stay away from me. It's basically like ah, like at this giant. I'm a giant gay. But I, I experienced it ever since I was a kid. Like with my bullies in junior high, they used to make, they used to phone me and they'd be like, this is a lesbian sex line. And I'd be like, I feel like if you made outgoing calls, you wouldn't make a lot of money. So I think this is Shannon from Homeroom, you know? Cause like, they wouldn't make any money. Yeah. I don't think they're supposed to call the other way. Yeah, no, that's not how it works, and I knew that <laughs> from being a kid, too. Even as a kid, you knew how the business worked. Yeah, I knew how sex work worked, because it's work, and I get it. <laughs> so when did you leave Winnipeg? For, you're, you're in Toronto now, right? Yeah, I live here now. Um, I moved to, to Montreal when I was, like, 20, and then I said... I don't like cocaine anymore. And I moved back to Winnipeg, and then I moved here, and that's... Did you notice... Uh, sorry, was Montreal better than Winnipeg? Yeah, it was like, it was like okay to... It was like a bit okay to be gay, you know? Okay, yeah. Like people, when you walk down the, ha like the street holding hands, people weren't like... It, it was... What's that movie, Pleasantville? I don't, what's that movie when, like, everything... Everybody's in black and white? It was like that. Yeah, like you'd be like, right, we're gay and we're in living color and everybody else would be like, that's not right. <laughs> but from their black and white point of view. Right, okay. So did you get into comedy in Winnipeg? or is No, I didn't start there. Oh. I, there um, I started in Montreal in like 2006. Okay, and what, what exactly prompted you to go to Montreal of all places? I didn't Google it, but it had probably, it had more comedy than Winnipeg, and I was right. <laughs> I there was one there was one club, Rumors Comedy Club, and they had an open mic every two months, and I was like, I'm dropping out of university. I need need more solid ground than that. I need an open mic at least every week. Okay, and that's what I got. So you you did go to Montreal to pursue comedy. Right? Yeah, I so just went and I just moved. But had you started to try to do comedy in Winnipeg? I did comedy once. I I did uh, I did twice. I did a, a coffee shop uh, variety show that my friend put on, and then I did a show at the one gay bar. It was called Clits and Giggles, and I said, "This is my life now." Clits and giggles. Yeah, and I didn't get paid, and I was like, "Let's go." Let's do this every day. <laughs> so do you have a, a sense of where you got the, the comedy bug, per se? What, what Did you have influences? Did someone inspire you to get into comedy? I guess my, my family's pretty funny, uh, but me and my dad used to watch, like, Live Aid and watch Robin Williams and Whoopi Goldberg and, they, and like, Gilda Radner. They really made me want to be funny, but honestly, I think it's just self-preservation when you, you pick... You pick a lane when you're a kid and you're different, and that was mine. I just made 
whenever something wasn't going right, I made them laugh and they forgot that this is me and that I'm queer and that I'm different and that I'm trans or whatever somebody had against me, I would make them laugh and it would just, we would be on equal playing ground again. And, and have you found that the comedy community has been equally open to you in that, in that way? Like in Toronto, I should say. Yeah, I guess it's just, uh, we're constantly changing. I don't know, like with the Me Too movement and I don't know, comedy's been, it was really hard. Comedy is a very rough, weird business that's a boys club and it's for white men and for like white women and white, it's for, you know, like it's very problematic. I and, see, okay. And so there's times when it was like, it was like, don't talk, don't talk about, I love that you don't talk about being a woman or talk about being queer. And I was like, time to talk about both. <laughs> and then I was like, time to not be a woman anymore. And you're a, I've just, I've paved my own ways. There weren't ways and I, every time, I came to a wall, I broke it down, because I was like, the, I, I'm funny. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who I am or what, what I am or how I identify, I'm funny, and that's the, because like, white male comics will be like, funny's funny, just be funny, but they're just, theirs is not the only story that exists, so my story's also funny. Are you? Know? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, you, you just won this contest. You, you made history mm -hmm. in this serious XM. What's it like being in a comedy contest? What's that it's like? It's so stressful. Have you guys heard of diarrhea? <laughs> don't do, do a competition if you don't like it. It was really stressful. It was, it was thousands of people apply, and I was in Top Comic in 2015, and I was one cocky kid back then. <laughs> but I, I just went into it. I just came out as trans, and... In the first round uh, at Yucks, I just decided for the first time I was going to talk about it on stage because I was like, fuck Top Comic. And then I went through and then I won it and I was like, I love Top Comic. It's crazy how great Top Comic is. <laughs> but it's, it's very stressful and it's just, uh, I, I was lucky to have one of my best friends in the finals with me and uh, to have, I have the most supportive fans and friends and family in the world. So it was pretty, pretty, ch pretty chill. Some people Can I say that I'm 35? Did it seem weird? <laughs> It's, it's, it seemed natural to me. Some people uh, say, you know, it's hard to judge the arts. It's hard to say one piece of art is better than another. You've been very proud of your victory here. Do you feel like you destroyed every other comic that you were up against in the Sirius XM Top Comic Contest? Oh, I crushed it so hard. It was insane. Yeah, yeah I did it. I did so good. And I, and I, I was like, I'm oh, the first out trans person to do this. And everybody was like, <laughs> and then I, I like manipulated them and then I did my Bieber impression and it was like this and then everybody was like Meow! and it was great I won so hard yeah. you do get mistaken according to your, your stand up comedy you do get mistaken for Justin Bieber quite a bit is that still the case? Yeah, that's like that's a that's a premise I made up because nobody. <laughs> no one's ever okay. Yeah, well, okay. When, when I'm in the Dufferin Mall, it happens, but that's like mini Winnipeg, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, it's a fair answer to my dumb question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we uh, ended the year uh, with a, a, a villain reemerging in comedy because I feel like comedy. We talk about this sometimes on the show. Comedy is under scrutiny a lot more, it seems, in the last few years for things you can and can't say. And then uh, we have this fellow, uh, Louis C.K. He came back. Uh, am I allowed to say his name? I know I. <laughs> It always kills the momentum. Harry Potter always said Voldemort and nothing. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Do you have thoughts about uh, uh, that whole situation, about him trying to come back, uh, the things he said on this leaked audio about uh, the kids from How Parkland? is it a leaked audio? You did a set in front of, like, what? Like, I don't understand that. Yeah, like, he was like, someone was recording me. I was on a <laughs> microphone. <laughs> that's, it. that's why. Um, that, that's, that's fair, yeah. I he, think that all the old boys in comedy need to grow the fuck up because the reason why you can't talk about things is because everybody's listening and your time is done. You being able to comment on everybody else's journey and not letting them comment on theirs, that's done. And making, coming back, like take a, take a, like have half a sip of a wine cooler, Louis C.K. Like take, have a bath, take a bit of a break. Like you assaulted so many women and caused them to quit comedy. You were the reason why there are less marginalized people in the rooms that you are making unsafe spaces. 
take a, and, ooh, say sorry. You never said sorry. I know he'll never listen to this. He's, he's like, I lost $35 million. Nobody cares. Oh, I'm so mad. Yeah. Oh, I think he just, he needed to take, he needs to take way more of than a break. He needs to say sorry. He needs to be accountable and atone for the things he did and show in any way that he learned from that experience. He thinks it's a joke and it's not. People, women's lives and women's bodies aren't a joke. And that's what I say. Very well put. Thank you for responding. So you've had a you had a you had a great year. You had a great 2018. It's fair to say. What's coming up this year? It's a 2019. What's going on, Shanti? I uh, get to have my top surgery on March 29th. Congratulations. And that's um. That's really all I've thought about. Uh, yeah. People have been like, "What's next? What's next?" But like when the only thing that you want is the one thing that's next, that's all I can see. Okay. So I bet I have everything in my roster to take over the world. I started a, people said that there couldn't be a queer comedy scene and there is one now. There just is, it just exists because we just, we exist so we, sh- we should have the space to do so. I just wanna keep making space uh, for queer people uh, and marginalized people to tell their stories and make people laugh and then um, hopefully can make more like more work so that I can stay in Canada. I don't have to go to the states where it's super weird. They're so. What are you doing over there? Stop it. They're yeah. Not, are they are they in the room? Who are you talking to right now? Is that not? Oh okay. yeah, that might. It was like a big that foreboding might be, thing. That might be the United States. States. America? <laughs> not <laughs> not Ferrara. I love her work, expect. but. <laughs> and uh, for people who want to follow you or find out more about you, where where would you like to send them on the computers and the phones and the. Internet. I'm gonna take the 29 uh, home. Um, no, no, no. I didn't mean. No, I know, no, Physically no, no. follow I, you. <laughs> I, that's. Oh. Uh, I I at Shanti Maroska on all social media platforms. Yes, we can say that. Yeah, and then you can find my album that went number one on iTunes, The Shanti Show, on iTunes and stream it on Spotify, or you can watch Working Moms. I was on that show for. Whew, don't blink. Uh, and also, and I will be on next season of Designated Survivor, playing myself. Oh, awesome! Ooh, do you want more more details? No. Okay, that's it. <laughs> like, watch it. I'm, it's good. Okay, so well, you're gonna come back when we have our little panel talk later. For sure. Yeah, okay. I'll just be over there getting drunk. Okay, it's always good for the panel. How about a hand for Shandy Barastica, everyone? Thank you, everybody. Thanks, we'll be guys. back with a performance by Joyful Joyful. Thank you for being here. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Pizza Trocadero, the finest pizzeria in all of Guelph. Isn't that right, sir? Oh, of course it is. I love it so much I can hardly stop eating it. Yeah, you love Pizza Trocadero a lot, don't you? Yeah, I do. Is it your favorite pizza place in Guelph? Oh, of course it is. There's no other place you like better? Uh, I like Pizza Trocadero the best. Are you sure? Yes, I am. I feel like you're not being honest with me. I am honest. Anyway, Pizza Trocadero is great. You can learn more about them at trocaderoguelph.ca. You can call them for pickup or delivery at 519-829-2444. That's Pizza Trocadero, the place of the good trade, right? Yep, and my favorite pizza there is Hawaiian style, probably. Aloha. Aloha. All right, welcome back to Long Night. How's everybody doing? Thank you for being here at the Gladstone. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Our next guests are Cormac Culkeen and Dave Grennan, who are currently based in Toronto, but first convened while living in Peterborough, Ontario. How about a shout-out for Peterborough, Ontario? Their music is so uniquely awe-inspiring and spellbinding, I have seen it bring grown adults to tears of joy. Next week, they head into the studio to finish their debut album, and they're here now to perform a song for us. Please give a warm ovation to Joyful Joyful.
Make some more noise for Joyful Joyful, everyone. Thank you so much. That was great. This is Cormac, this is Dave. How, uh, Cormac and Dave, everyone. Look at that. Hello. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having us. It's my pleasure. Uh, what do you want to say about the song that we just heard? Dave, do you, what do you want to say about that song? What's going on on that song? What was the song called? That song's called Marrow. Marrow. Yep. Okay. What Dave. inspired that title? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dave. Yeah, it's a uh, Cormac cut in there. Let's just. Uh, I can share space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dave, what do you want to say about Marrow? Uh, I just hope that y'all enjoyed it. It's, uh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does it work? What's going on there? Is it improvised? Is it totally planned? What's going on? There is obviously a structure, as you can tell. Uh, it's a pop song of sorts. Um, and but 
we're kind of processing what I'm doing is all live, and so choosing delay times and changing the settings and uh, sampling Cormac's voice live, which was uh, that nonsense at the end. Okay. Yeah. It's not nonsense. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> it was beautiful. I, I, <laughs> Thank I, you. As you know, I've, I've seen Joyful Joyful a few times, and it always uh, moves me. So I, I'm very happy you're here. I'm, uh, glad, I'm glad to hear that, Vish. It's really kind. Do you want to say anything about the uh, lyrical intent behind that song, Carmen? Yeah. I wanted to, to write. Um, we Often the songs that we write kind of arise out of improvisation. But for that one, I wanted to see about writing a song about um, about queer sex and uh, about and to see if I could uh, because I often I often don't and and so I wanted to give it a try and also to to write about procreation and bodies and those kinds of things because those things are important so that's where that started okay yeah okay and did you did you learn a lot about queer sex in writing the song, or I, I, I had studied hard previously. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I had done some research. Excellent. Yeah. That's that's good to hear. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now it's hard I, one. <laughs> <laughs> did I get Did I get this right? You you met in Peterborough. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. And and you're not in Peterborough anymore. We're both. We live together actually in Toronto. You live together in Toronto. Yeah, now, how with, did you? With uh, Cormac's wife. With yeah. Cormac's wife. So yeah. how did you meet in Peterborough? Cormac, do you want to, do you recall? Yeah, we met through the magic of community radio. Specifically Trent Radio, the greatest community radio station in Canada. Uh, just, <laughs> just hold the phone here. I, I work for a pretty good community. No, I know where you work. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, I'll just leave that alone. So you met at Trent Radio, did you? Yeah, yeah. This is a pretty good radio station. Um, <laughs> In terms of Canadian radio stations, uh, what, what were you both doing shows or something? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we both had uh, improvised noise shows, no, uh, broadly speaking, experimental music noise shows. Well, live improvised okay. sets. Yeah. yeah. Late at night, and uh, it was funny. I was really involved with the radio station at the time, but I didn't have a radio in my house. So the only way that I could listen to shows that I liked was to go to the radio station and to just hang out in the kitchen, which is uh, not. <laughs> a typical way to hang to listen to the radio and so I really liked Dave's show and so I would go and hang out in the kitchen and I was like this show is amazing and he's what, like what drew you to noise per se do you have any sense of that like in terms of because you know that's a very unique thing you do together yeah. I think uh, I don't know what drew me to it but what it gives me is is it makes me absent it helps me to disappear and be whole okay, okay. Yeah. all right yeah. Carmack do you have any uh, yeah, I think that it's it's really interesting to kind of just enter into it, especially because a lot of the stuff that Dave and I are drawn to is drone music, and drone music uh, is is uh, for me it's relating to traditional music. And then mm -hmm. uh, when I was doing noise shows, a lot of that was vocal drone based, and uh, it, yeah, I really enjoy kind of entering into that and trying to kind of create a world. Yeah. And when I do that, it's a good place to be. Well, it's a remarkable thing, whatever, I don't exactly know how it works. I kind of knew, I guess, but mm -hmm. it's, it's remarkable, joyful, joyful. And I also alluded to the fact that my understanding is you're very close to being finished your first album, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. Next week? Next week, uh, theoretically, we will be done recording and largely done mixing. Okay, and yeah. how many songs are we thinking of here, do you know? We've recorded five and uh, about 35 minutes of music. Right. Uh, at least four of them will live together and the other one is wonderful and will live elsewhere if it doesn't live with them. Oh, it's like a suite, the four, or sort of? Like they Should be pretty sweet, yeah. No, that's not what I... <laughs> that's not what I'm, Clearly, this is what they teach you at that radio station of yours. No, I meant like a suite of music. You know, that four intertwined pieces of... Never mind. It's over your head. It's fine. Yeah. No, that's great. So do you know when it'll be out? Undetermined. Undetermined. Uh, as soon as it makes sense to be out. Okay. Yeah. I'm, well, lo I'm looking forward to it being out. <laughs> we've been working on it for such a long time, and we've been writing these songs for quite a long time, so we're kind of ready to release it into the world and see what other people think of it. This, this thing can be in a uh, massy hall, I feel like. This thing can be in a big space and it'll fill the whole room. That's what I, that's what I feel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's all I have to say. Oh, where can people, uh, you know, it's very hard because your name is Joyful Joyful. When yeah. you Google it, you get nothing. It's a lot no, of- you get you Lauren get Hill and Sister Act. Sister think, Act. Yeah. yeah, so you get a lot of religious stuff. Is there a religious connotation to the name? Uh, Sort of, I guess. Like, yeah. I mean, it's certainly referencing the Ode to Joy. Right. But 
Um, but, I, but I think that's very plain. Uh, well, I mean, my point here is that do you have a web presence, per se, beyond Facebook? Yeah, we have a Tumblr that is a kind of a terrible website. It's uh, thatjoyfulsound.tumblr.com. Okay. And as of a couple weeks ago, we have a, uh, an Instagram with two posts about this and about a festival that we're playing in Montreal at the end of the month. Okay, great. Oh, yes, where, what is the festival you're playing uh, in It's Montreal? Lux Magna. Okay, yeah. and it's January 25th, I want to say? Yeah, January 25th, and we're okay. playing with uh, Maldivisa and uh, Licht Quanta. Okay. Well, like I said, immense pleasure to have you here perform a song. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. You're going to stick around. We have a little bit of time for a panel discussion. That's great. And, and I should say it involves a little bit of audience interaction. Uh, every the last couple of months, I've, I've asked the audience before we go to break to think of a topic that the panel will discuss. So while we take a break, can you will you all agree to think of a topic? And when I come back, I'll say, what's the topic? And one of you will yell it, per preferably just one of you. Is that possible? No, not now. It's not. You're on the panel. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with a short panel discussion. Have a, another round of applause for Joyful Joyful. Thank you. This episode of Creative Control is sponsored by two amazing places planet bean coffee in guelph freshly roasted fair trade certified organic coffee you can learn more about planet bean at planetbeancoffee.com do you like coffee yeah i like coffee uh, coffee is really good i'm a kid and i don't personally drink it but once i taste it i love it oh and cappuccino ice cream i love cappuccino ice cream mm. what about you do you like coffee no why not i don't because i don't like the smell of it. Okay, that seems fair. But what about this? Let me lay this on you. Granddad's Donuts, located at 574 James Street North in Hamilton, Ontario. The best donuts anywhere. You can learn more about them at granddads.ca. Hey, do you like donuts? Yes. What's your favorite donut? Uh, chocolate with sprinkles on top. That sounds pretty good. What about you? Do you like donuts? Uh, I like coffee and donuts. My favorite donut is probably Boston Cream. Amazing. Amazing. You can get one of those at Granddad's Donuts. Thank you very much to Granddad's Donuts and Planet Bean Coffee. All right, we're back on a long night. I just want to thank you all for uh, coming out and watching the show and, and shushing people and, and, and also thinking about what we're talking about. It's very nice of you. Have you all had a good time so far? I appreciate that very much. And how about another round of applause for the panel? Uh, amazing people. <laughs> okay, it is time now to solicit a, a topic or two uh, from the audience. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. Does anyone have any topics for us to talk about? Recycling. Recycling? Okay, recycling. What exactly do you want to know about recycling? <laughs> like recycling beats? I do that all the time. Beats. Oh, like music recycling. And lyrics. I recycle lyrics. Do you do? Yeah. Okay. It's called referencing. Right. It's <laughs> paying homage by taking other people's... Can I interrupt? I know we don't have a lot of time, but I just want to shout out the installation here and my homegirl, Kun, who worked on one of our videos back when she was in Ryerson, and now this installation here. Like, isn't this a crazy piece yeah, of yeah, art? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. that beautiful? A guy came out of it when you said that. Yeah, that Good weird. job. It gave birth to at least two people. That was amazing. Okay, uh, the topic of conversation uh, is uh, recycling. Uh, how does recycling uh, work in, in your work? Shanti, does recycling come up? Uh, someone asked me um, if I was going to make soap out of my breasts once I get them removed, and I have to say to that person, shut up. <laughs> that was a legitimate question that someone asked you? Yeah, people ask really weird things all the time. Yeah, that's strange. That is strange. Uh, James, do you have any recycling stances, well, perspectives? It's on my mind because Gary Goleman, who's a, a oh, yeah. comedian, yeah. Um, and I'm a big fan of his, he has resolved to tweet writing advice or creative advice, a uh, piece of advice every day on Twitter uh, for 2019. And we're already only a few days in, and some of them have been really good. Mm -hmm. And one of them from a couple of days ago that relates to recycling, and I wanted to kind of throw this to the artists on the panel, 
is that to always to go back and uh, re-explore old ideas that you've rejected because you are a better artist now than you were when you rejected the idea. It, the idea may not be, may, may, you may not have been able or had the skill or whatever to do something with it then, but you might be able to now, so don't. So I'm just wondering about like recycling ideas and the, pro that's for the process for artistic uh, that's a good call. folk on the table. Cormac, the Dave, d d does this, uh, uh, Cormac, does this work in Joyful Joyful in some way? I think so, for sure. Um, I think because Dave and I are both bringing ideas to the project that we've sometimes been working on for the better part of a decade, uh, stuff that came up in our radio shows, stuff that came up in, in other projects that we had that just kind of didn't work out. And so, and then to be able to explore it in a, in the context of our band where there's a lot of space. Yeah. So something where it wouldn't have worked as a folk song can work uh, as a joyful, joyful song. And so I think that rings true for me. That's cool. Okay. Dave, you want to add anything? Yeah, I think in, uh, in music, every, any particular tradition is so deep that uh, it is, there's no tradition that is played out that, is, that has not been explored uh, to its full depth because there, it is endless. Music is endless. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so recycling, sure, because there's, these materials don't disappear. Absolutely. Have you, have you all heard of the band Nirvana? <laughs> Fantastic band. I was, I was so great. excited when you started talking about Nirvana tonight. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Nirvana's great. Not really much to do with recycling, per se, but I just wanted to bring them up again. Yeah. <laughs> Nirvana. <laughs> Wow. Let's name bands they recycled. <laughs> exactly, we could, we could, but we don't have time. Um, unfortunately, I have to cut us off. Uh, Nirvana is uh, uh, unimpeachable, They're a fantastic band. Uh, you should check them out, Nirvana, nirvana.com, or go to their MySpace page. I, I don't know where they are. That is the end of our show, unfortunately. We're out of time. I wish we had more time with the panel, but uh, I had a great time. How about more uh, noise for John Orpheus, Joyful Joyful, Shandy Barastica, James Keast, The Bicycles. We'll return in February, February 9th at Workman Arts. Thank you very much for coming to Long Winter and to, to, to Long Night. Talk to you soon. Be well. Bye for now. Yeah.